want to treat three meals for everybody who is late. Um, thank you all for being here for us. Uh, yesterday we had a lot of different challenges to deal with, and I apologize for not being so communicate not communicate with you earlier, but once again we have so many different challenges yesterday. After we finish our day, trying to resolve and check all the best options for all of us today and next day. Um, the reason you're here at 9.30, just started late, was because of the fall weather. I don't know if you guys noticed, we're having a lot of thunderstorms in the area at this moment. And that will be my first question for you as a group. Is anybody here is still not understand why we are not racing right now? Please raise your hands. Take your time, because I want to explain to you all. Great. On the Rule 32.1a, Appendix E adds thunderstorms. We are experiencing a lot of thunderstorms in the area. So therefore, that's our main reason for not being out of there and racing right now. Do we have wind? Yes, we do. However, in our island here, unfortunately, we don't have any good course based on the wind direction as well. So it's not only about the thunderstorm, but also the wind direction doesn't help us to set a course. Unfortunately, that's one of the things race committee and organized authority can control. Mother Nature. So it's not on us. I wish we could be out there even raining. We all have our food gears. We are not made out of sugar. We can also we can rain and sail when it's raining. However, when we see lightning, thunderstorm, that's a big no on the racing rules of sailing. Any questions regarding that situation? Please guys, this is the time that we can talk, we can speak up, because it's really hard on us when we see messages on a WhatsApp group, and seems like we are not on the same page. And the most important thing for me here is we all need to be on the same page. Once again, give you time and opportunity for all of you all to speak up. Most of you guys may not speak English. I don't speak English very well as well. My main language is Portuguese. But even though we are trying hard to communicate and make an easier life for everybody. Any comments so far regarding racing, not racing today? Did everybody, does everybody understand what I'm saying? No, everybody still sleeping. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I'm going to explain what happened and why we made decisions to. Please, if you share, translate to your friends, help me on that. So, last night we sit down for a couple hours before we made that announcement. I, I did the announcement on, on the web, WhatsApp group <coughs> regarding the, our program in the morning. Um, we checked all the possibilities around the islands, the island, and unfortunately, based on the weather, it's confirmed right now we couldn't find a, a, a better situation early in the morning. We're still trying today afternoon. But it's still at an, in the air right now. We don't know if it's going to be possible to race today. Once again, I thank, thank all of you guys for your patience and support. It's not an easy decision. It's not easy to be in our position. Most of you guys not only sailors. You also organize events in each country. And you guys, I hope you guys understand our feelings to be on this side. All of you come from far away to support this event. <coughs> we appreciate that. But once again, unfortunately, we can't control Mother Nature. So, 
I would like to, on behalf of our organized authority, thank each one of you for your supporting patient. I do appreciate that. Uh, we are trying to entertain you. So Chris Watts is our international judge, world sailing judge. I don't need to speak up over his credentials. I bet everybody knows him really well more than me. Chris is with us, has been radio sailing family for more than 70 years. Right? Yeah. 70 years. How old are you, sir? <laughs> 25. There you go. <laughs> so this is a joke, but anyway, he does a lot of, have, have a lot of experience, and we thought, as organized authority here, we thought to offer you a fun time today in the morning, which means is we are trying to set a nice seminar for you, where we're going to be talking about some rules, then we're going to have a nice break to relax, go buy our gin and tonic at 9.30 in the morning, <laughs> come back here and create some situations, like situation that we have in the race course. And Chris, DDA, and Vic will be challenging us with some rules. Must be fun. I want to have fun with you all. So, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this is our race course. <laughs> and please make sure so do you guys how important it is to be patient. Once again, we are ready to race, but unfortunately one nature that does allow us to do what we want. With that in mind guys, I wish you a good day, I wish you a good morning here. Let's have fun. We're gonna try to race today after the weather permits. It's, it's not 100% confirmed yet, but we will let you know pretty soon. However, I would like to ask you a big favor. By 12.30, we're not gonna have your lunch. <laughs> Having your lunch, that's the time when you're gonna make a call if you're gonna be racing or not today. Whatever the call is, Please, we need your support. We need to keep united because it's not easy for us to say no to you all. Because by saying no to you, we are saying no to us. Don't forget, we share the same passion. I am a sailor as well. I would love to be sailing, but we are here to support this event. I appreciate your attention once again. With all, please watch DDA and Vic. Please, guys, enjoy. That's our time. To actually, you know, you got a question. Uh, yeah, uh, I saw yesterday's video, and I am number seven. I am the one who did not around with the boys. Ooh. And against the sun, I didn't see it. I haven't even seen and it. so I would like to DNF, but it was finished. The race. Like, like in return. I am retiring from the race. Oh. Okay. Guys. This is what sportsmanship like. I thank you all of you for showing our videos to. And thank you for your sportsmanship. I appreciate that. That happens sometimes. Once again, we're human beings. It was hard to see. We have a video that shows us later that he did not sail the course. And because of that, he decided to retire. That's a sportsmanship like. We appreciate you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's one of the reasons I enjoy being with the class. You ought to try it with a laser, so it's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not the radio control lasers, the full size lasers. They're the ones that survive in orange juice. Um, I hope the next you know, session here is fun. Um, and then what I want to do in the second part is, is for you to start coming forward saying, I've got this situation, I had an argument with him, or whatever it is. <laughs> And then we'll, we'll try and sort it out and discuss it just as a bit of fun. Okay? So it'll be a whole load of situations. So while we're talking, it might be an idea. Have something in your mind because you're the ones that are going to set the agenda, not me. Okay? Oh, it's an idea. Right. But when I um, arrived, um, Darren told me that this area here was the launching area. <laughs> um, I, I was a bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
launched demanding. And that, that was uh, uh, last year's. <coughs> So, <coughs> okay, that's just in, in case you, you don't know um, exactly my background. I, I was a headmaster before, um, when I retired, the RYA um, offered me a job. And I said no, and then they offered me more money, and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I worked with them um, only three days a week as um, the education officer. It took them a little bit of time to realise that um, I didn't actually have to be in the office. I could be at home on my computer. And having got that through to them, I could actually be in Thailand on my computer and they would never know. <laughs> so that, that was um, how it worked. But just to show, I think, all judges that I know were all pretty good sailors in their time. Um, we also umpire as well. We're not frightening. We're, we're just other sailors. Um, some of us, well, I've been doing it for 65 years. And actually, Fred, it was 2000, and uh, it was Barbados. When was that? It was the first time. 2009. 2009. It was the first time I, I got involved in the one meters. And that was only because I was racing one meters myself at the time. Um, not at the moment, because somebody hit me. I got a big split right down the side of it, and I don't know how to rip it around. And not much time for that. <clears throat> and so I still race. Um, not a star, that was just uh, one out of and uh, that was just before the Olympics. Right, purpose is to establish something about the patterns uh, in um, the rules. If, um, it's like working for first principles. When you teach science and things like that, there are lots of very complicated formulas you know, to learn. And so if you actually understand what it's about, you can actually divide, uh, you know, revive it from your memory yourself if you've forgotten the little checks. And the other one is the it, it, it depends concept. So we go back to these first principles. Why do we have racing rules? You're allowed to comment. <laughs> you don't have to be quiet. For further sake. You know? Complicate sailing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. There are monetary reasons, <laughs> which we'll touch on, which may. Um... Yeah. Oops. Must be British. Look at that. He's about to scratch. There's a bit of humour here. Because. Um, Collisions are good for TV. It's only for a good show. Alright. Um, because the insurance companies aren't too happy when you do collisions. <laughs> and actually, the best is they're really like our boats really care for them. So we're not happy when they come together. So it, it is about boats keeping apart. No, we won't do that. That's um, but here. Um, which boat do you think is the easiest one to keep clear? Blue or yellow? Blue. Blue. Okay. So blue is possibly a bit more manoeuvrable and can go up and keep clear. Okay. What about here? Blue. Blue. Blue again. Blue. Well, it's a bit of a pattern there, perhaps I should have changed it. <laughs> Oops, let's go back again. And the other one here. <coughs> it's a bit harder, but we'll touch on that. Um, <coughs> the Dutch are here, aren't they? The Dutch, they're the same. Yeah. Yeah, you're responsible for this one. Yeah, are we? Yeah, Good. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we will explain that in a minute or two. That's right. Oh, oh, Peter, you're in trouble. Are you complaining all? So, you know, putting it into dinghy format, um, of the Wayfarer class. Okay, we were saying here that um, a green has probably got better visibility, etc. But it is actually more manoeuvrable. And the guy behind is more manoeuvrable as well. And that actually covers two rules. The 11 and 12. Okay? And it's about being more maneuverable. <coughs> okay. 
So the more manoeuvrable boat is the one generally that keeps clear. The right-of-way boat is the less manoeuvrable one. And usually, and they have to give room as well, but that's one of the exceptions. And we'll touch on that later. And what about this um, port and star? Oops. <coughs> okay. Well, I hope 2960 has got his eyes open. It looks as though someone's looking under the boot. Okay, where's the rudder? On the old boats. And Dutch barges. It's on the side, okay? It's not on the centre line. And then there are different names for Starboard. Steerboard. Steerboard. Well, that probably means more sense to you, but my mind, I mean, being in Holland, it is that port is actually Starboard. And how on earth that came about, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes up in hearings where they say, um, you know, um, no, I was on Starboard. Oh, I was on starboard. Oh, are you Dutch? Yes. Okay, we understand that. <laughs> so, okay, with the runner in the water. On starboard tack. Okay, port tack with the wind blowing on the other side. You probably see where this is going already. Ooh. On starboard tack, of course, happened to the runner. So, it is the less manoeuvrable boat. Whereas on port tank, it's the more manoeuvrable boat. And that, allegedly, ah, is why and how it all came about. Really? Hmm. Now, for you guys, and all of us, with our rudders on the centre line, you know, um, it doesn't make much sense. Um, but that, that, when I first thought it, I thought, oh, that, 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 that sounds very logical. And that, that could be exactly what it was about. So the Dutch used to race barges, and still do. And the rudder's still on the side. Apparently, haven't seen the Viking boats then. No. Well, the Vikings had it on the side as well. Yeah. Well, that was the Vikings. Race. <coughs> but they didn't race. Um, when I was in. We were fighting. <laughs> when, uh, we, um, yeah, I went to the uh, SB20 Worlds in St. Petersburg. And while we were there, um, they got this um, replica of a Viking boat that sailed by. And there was no wind or anything. We got up alongside it with the guy with the photograph. So I held up a yellow flag, you know, to penalise it under Rule 42. <laughs> <laughs> and so we made, made a good picture that uh, appeared on uh, Facebook. <laughs> okay, so the starboard tank, although it's right away, okay, because it's less removable, and the port tank is the key trigger. Now, what we're going to do is try and set out a nice pattern and have the rules fit together. So it's just the part two rules. Um, when I used to do these talks some time ago, I, I used to take the rule book and start at the back. And I used to take um, the Commodores, that was always a good rule book, you see. And say, do, do you use the, um, the flags? Is that part of your setting? Oh no, don't use that, rip it out and throw it away. And then you go into the index, time speed charts like that, you go through, all the way through the book, ripping it out, big part of paper on the floor. <laughs> and actually, all you end up with, but you guys will be different because of Appendix E, but that's only two pages to do with Part 2. And most of that's to do with thunderstorms and sticking your um, air in somebody's face. Um, and then you're left with the Part 2 rules, which are when boats meet, and the definitions. So you've got the rules now to actually go sailing and racing properly. You only need to know 11 rules and the definitions. And these little alterations within the appendix E, which makes the whole thing uh, you know, a lot more simple. And then I'll give the um, edited book back to the Commonwealth. Now, because I was doing this, the RYA in their book decided to stop me ripping out the pages and just paint those pages blue. <laughs> <laughs> so if you buy an RYA rule book, um, you can blame me for the fact you've got blue pages in it. And uh, those are just all the things you need to go say. So it, it's not much. So let's make a start. Which one was that one? Port and starboard? Rule 10. Okay. These are the key clear rules. Which one's this? 11. Okay. Windward, boat keeps clear. This one? 12. Well done. And this one? 
It's the other of the four fundamental rules. Tacking. Why would they? When do you start to tack? When do you actually start to tack? When you say it starts to flap. When? When you say it starts to flap. No. No, because you would just be laughing about close hold. You know, I think when I was taught to sail a few years ago, you know, you put the helm over and we were tacking. But actually the definition of um, tacking is from when the bow goes through the wind. When you go past head to wind. That's when you start to tack. So luffing, that's not part of it. If you luff up, that's not part of it. It's only when your bow goes through head to wind. When do you complete your tack? Oh, when you're on close hold. In former times, we used to sh sails fall. That was a shout, you know, Ooh, yeah, sails fall. But you don't actually have to put your sails in. So what it is now is the compass course for close hold. Okay, so when you reach that compass call, the close hold, your tack has finished. But we'll come on to something else that hangs on to that mm -hmm. within the next pattern. So that's tacking. And we understand the definition of tacking there. And those are the key variables. There's another one here that really quite often, and it's always considered in every protest hearing, rule 14, which is avoiding collisions. Don't come together. Because you can actually be the right-of-way vote, but we decide that you never took an any avoiding action, and you could have done, and both boats may get this one. <coughs> so you just need to, you know, when you get to that point of thinking, there's going to be a collision here, the rules protect you, and you just keep out of the way, okay? And then protest. Okay, the seats, you can move the seats. No one likes to sit in the front row. So what we do is remove the front row. Because <laughs> 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 there's the headmaster. Right, now we come round to three other rules. That's the way to do it. <laughs> um, and these are limitations. These are the rules where you think you are right away, but you are limited in what you can actually do. Okay? I think that will make sense in a few minutes there, but you're not always the right away vote. With these limitations alter what you're allowed to do. And the first one, this one causes quite a bit of debate. And uh, we had a hearing two days ago on this one, 15. And this is a bit like a traffic light. Okay? This guy is tapped onto starboard, but he doesn't get immediate rights. It's like, it doesn't go red-green, it goes red-amber-green. And this amber is a bit of time. So, when yellow has completed its tack, blue then has to think about taking avoiding action. So you don't immediately get port the starboard rights for the starboard right. There's an interval of time. Now, in one meters, that's not very long. Okay? Um, in big J class <coughs> boats, it may be a couple of minutes. <laughs> but um, for you guys, it's not very long. Um, you can try practicing it. Watch a guy tag, complete his tag, and see how quickly you can tag. Okay? And that will give you some idea. And that will change in you know, different conditions or sea conditions. Okay? So it's not a fixed time, it's relative to the conditions at that particular time. <clears throat> that one is usually the one that causes quite a bit of discussion. Did anyone want to say anything about that? You're allowed to argue with me. It happens quite often that uh, the yellow boat packs, and, and if I was to wait until it's on the, the close hold of starboard, then uh, I would collide. So what happens is that I think me and many others, when the other boat starts tacking, I also tack because I know what's going to happen. But it's okay. the, the yellow boat is not following the rules. Yeah, that's right. So what can you do? Protest. Absolutely. Okay. Keep clear and protest. Never get involved in hitting. But you know, it does mean you have to protest. Which is why you guys have um, brought us here. <laughs> to actually, you know, deal with that sort of situation. 
Well, you know, protesting your friend doesn't mean to say I don't love you anymore. <laughs> it's just we don't quite um, you know, agree at this particular time uh, on what's happening. Okay? This one? Well, you can probably guess what the number's going to be. Because we're, we're following a pattern here. Okay? And this is the one that was a right away vote. You have to hold your course at some times. You can't alter your course suddenly to put a boat that was keeping clear in trouble. Now, if he's got time to react to your course, like he's a bit further away, no problem. But if you immediately put him in a situation where there's going to be a collision and he can't be clear, you will have broken this rule 16 and you won't. Okay. And that really. Uh, Sorry, what? Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah. That really matters when you are uh, rounding the, the mark and you're coming up on the port, port tech, and yeah. the other one comes down on the startup tech, and it's constantly changing courses. <laughs> <laughs> No one likes to be red or green. Right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. All right. You've got some marks. Like this. Right. Okay. 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 Like this. Right. Yellow bird. I have a yellow bird and uh, someone else has a blue one coming up there and this guy coming down. And where should I go? Because he's constantly, he is the right away bird, right? And he is constantly turning on, turning towards me. And where should I go? And that's that is that rule that limits right. blue in what it can do. Right. Because blue is putting yellow in a situation immediately. So we had quite a few discussions. So blue has to avoid uh, give give room to yellow. Yeah, because I don't know where he is going. That's that's uh, an issue we have discussed. And it's one of the reasons we have a spread mark. Yeah. to take the boats across and away to prevent that sort of situation right. on a windward of course. Okay, that's okay. a typical example of the uh, 16. Um, thank you for that. I've got one or two other Yes. Does, does proper force come into this? Because if, if the blue boat is actually rounding the mark, that is his proper force, isn't it? Um, yeah, but proper course has got many you know, variations to it. Um, but the, this bit here, the 16 rule, would supersede that. Okay? It, it's only to get to um, proper course, it's the course you would take in the absence of you know, any other boats. But trying to hit a boat isn't going to be a really good for your proper course. <laughs> but it doesn't apply when you are establishing a Oh, no, course. now. 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 Um, th this is a classic. Or even that. Right. Well, no, it's that one. That one, yeah. It's that one. Um, so this one has already established it, and this one has got to keep clear. Right. Under what rule? Yeah. Blue is on starboard, yellow is on board. If it goes the other way, what happens now? Yeah, blue is the one to keep clear. Because right. it's the wind with it. Rule 11. Yep, rule 11. <coughs> Thank you. You, you have a point. <laughs> okay. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I won't drag everyone out. <laughs> but if it's something a bit complex, it's easy to explain that. So 16 is the one that limits the course you can actually take. What about this one? <laughs> yeah. Anyone want to have a go explaining this one? Do you know what an overlap is? Yeah. Bit of a basic question. Okay. Blue sails in establishes the, the overlap here. And what blue has done is done it within two boat lengths. So blue is limited by proper course. You can't sail about the proper course to the next mark. Or he had a pretty good excuse to go there somewhere else, right? Yeah. 
But yeah. this proper course, Yellow yeah, may have a different view. That's right. Maybe there's a current going that way. So he thinks proper course is there. Okay? And blue is saying there. What happens in this case? So who, who's, who will have the right? Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. You've got two people both thinking they've got proper course. Yellow is still under rule 11, so it has to be clear. Okay? Windward vote keeps clear. So if there's an argument, keep clear, and if you don't like it, protest. Blue for sailing above a proper course. Okay, we had a situation like this in, um, oh, it's in um, South Africa with catamarans. And these two guys were friends. And they travelled all the way down from Bulawayo, sharing a trailer and a car. This one decided not to respond and sailed down into him while this one was sailing up. And uh, this one, the mark was down here, so this guy was well above his course. So this guy decided to push him down. So we disqualify both of them. They sat for the rest of the week at office ends of every table. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth they ever got home sharing the same car? I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, that's so we dealt with that. If it establishes the overlap from beyond two boat lengths, then he is entitled to love. Okay? But not beyond next wind. But in loving, you have to give this person an opportunity to keep clear. You know? And I think in the old days we used to go, bang, you're out. <laughs> you can't do that. Now you must give the opportunity to actually keep clear when you're when you're loving. <coughs> okay? All happy. If you can't see when we're using this shout, okay? I'll just keep forgetting to turn it around. <clears throat> now we come on to 19, which is about giving room for obstructions. Okay, 20 is the room to tack. That course is a bit of fun in radio sailing <clears throat> uh, because <coughs> you can imagine that here it is the coast, okay? So this guy here calls for room to tank, and now it's quite clear in the radio setting that you have to, the call you have to make is what? You tank. Room to tank. You tank. We call your boat number wants room to tank, okay? Then this guy has to do one of two things. Okay. Tack immediately, or say you tack and he goes behind and this one tacks okay if there is another boat here coming in also on starboard he calls for room to tack he goes and tacks he follows and you have to go immediately green calls starboard and you all have to go back again that quite often doesn't happen. But green um, gets forced to, to go off. But it only happens when they're close enough. Yellow has to have room to tack and tack back again for the port and starboard call to work. Okay, so <coughs> you complete the tack and then that, that's okay. <coughs> but doesn't it also, I mean, the blue boat must have room enough not to hit the rocks. That's one of the problems. Because you can go back, but then the, the secret thing is, well, I said the same thing, is to put a very slow tack in. So you're still tacking, and these then have to go. Okay? So just put a slow tack in. Which means I have no speed if I'm forced well, to tack that, back. That, that is a bit of a problem, yeah. Um, the other solution is not to go in there. <laughs> um, or um, you, you tack. Um, you, you, you make sure you're far enough ahead to be able to tack and come out. Easier said than done. Um, cows on the Isle of Wight, where I sat, um, there's a bit here um, called the Green. 
and these are rocks here, and, and to the beach. And there was one local sailor who was very, very well known, and used to sail with the royal family. And when he was racing, his wife would go swimming on this bit. <laughs> and if he was uh, doing quite well, she would stand up in the water, so he knew how close he could go in. <laughs> oh, okay. If he was somewhere back here, she would kneel down. He <laughs> was character. And then we've got one or two other bits and pieces about alternative things like if you're OCS, you don't have much rights when you're returning. Um, if you're capsized, anchored, um, you won't be doing much of that or you're aground. If possible, keep clear. And if reasonably possible, keep clear. The boat's um, not racing. If you're doing a penalty, again, you're, you're required to keep clear. The new rule number that's come in is 43, which is exoneration. Sometimes you, you may be forced to touch the mark, for instance, by another boat breaking a rule, in which case um, you can be exonerated. Now, the exoneration normally only happens in a protest. Okay? So um, you can continue and protest the other guy, win the protest, and you'll be exonerated, say, the hitting the mark. You were forced to break a rule by another boat breaking that rule. So in the protest room, you, you can be exonerated. If you're not sure whether you're going to win the protest or not, do a quick turn and continue and protest. Okay? And it's quite a nice sort of pattern. So here you've got your keep clear rules. And over there, you've got the limitations that just restrict what, what you can actually do when you are a right away member. Okay? Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. Everywhere I, I do this. And this is part, I uh, pinched these drawings out of the IJ seminar. Um, and I'm running one in Venice next week. So I just took this bit out of it because um, it, it's a lovely model. <laughs> uh, and it was made by a Canadian <coughs> and I, I think it really does help to keep these things in your mind. <coughs> so, you, you've got the idea um, about there's a pattern to the rules. And the well-known world saying, it depends. You know, that's the bit of the limitations. You know, it depends on, you know, what you're limited by and how you say it. Okay? So you're all happy? Yes. Okay. Okay, so somebody wants room at the mark, I guess. <laughs> Bit of a sad um, uh, thing. This was at the uh, Croatia a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Spanish guy had to go home because of a, a death in the family. So every single boat did a sail by, you know, and they sent him the video. Yeah, it's a matter of respect. Very nice. So you had a whole fleet on the water at once. <coughs> okay, it's probably a good idea to, to stop at this point. Um, it's quarter past ten. Um, coffee, or whatever, and then meet back in what? Quarter past ten? Okay. And then that's about situations. That's you guys talking about problems you've had, and the three of us are trying to help solve them. <laughs> so many thanks, thank you. It's just screaming the whole time, screaming and shouting. Um, the boys are a lot quieter. <laughs> um, that, that's quite a few by two. Now, the only problem is that when they're saying laser sailors, go and sail on a big boat and think they can do the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you've got the 20 or 30 footers sitting there like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of the other things, to, to try and avoid starting earlier, mm -hmm. is the guy sailing down the line? Yeah. Okay. That, that, you just can't do it. You've got to go over the line and come back if you can. If it's a black flag or a uniform, then um, you immediately pick up a problem. You know the black flag rule? Two marks and the weather mark. Keep out of that triangle.
Okay. One minute. We can come around here. Yeah, one minute. One minute to go. Yeah. Yeah. What about finishing time? Oh, finishing time. I have one question for you. Yeah. 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 Supersedes 18 and giving room. This guy's got room to come in this side, but this guy coming in here is an obstruction because he's the right way boat, and so both of these have got to tack off. <coughs> okay, and then he finishes and then they have to tack back again. No problem, more like that. Okay, mm -hmm. is it clean? <coughs> so that, that, was, that was one thing I noticed yesterday. Yeah. That all the day before. Um, when do you actually finish? When you clear the marks. No, no. no. When, you when, you when you're about, when you're about, you're about process to the, yeah. the line. Okay, you finish when your bow crosses the line. Yeah, you have to When, do you, when do you finish course. racing? When your steering crosses the line. No. no. When do you no. finish racing? When the boat has gone over the line. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah, you have to clear the line yeah. and sail away. Sail away. The marks. The board, yeah, right. Okay? So here it's no good in saying I finished. Tough luck. You know, I'm not racing anymore. He is still racing until he's cleared the marks. Okay? So the racing will still apply even up here. So he's not keeping clear and won't be disqualified in a hearing. That also means that he can go down, wait until everyone goes across the line, and he go past the line, latest, and he get the, the number when he touched the line. He doesn't. Well, um, no, because he would have to come take his turn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If he's wrong, yes. And take his turn by which time probably a few yeah. boats are finished. Yeah. Then he finishes the second time, yeah. and the uh, the girls here know to take both positions. So if there's a hearing, something like that, we decide something else has happened, and another boat is possible, he may get his original place back. Place back. So you know, that's the kind of information we need in, in the jury. So the girls will record everything. But if it was a genuine penalty like that, he, he, he gets the second time across the line. 
Can he uh, sail down to a 360 and sail back up, or he has to go around the board? No, no, he can do his 360. And then, uh, so uh, it's a white finish, and he's through. His protest, he sails back down, 360, and then uh, down, 360, and then back in. He can do that. Without, yeah, he can do that. The rules are like that. A bit dodgy sailing down with other boats finishing. Sometimes it is better to go around the end. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Come on. Well, my friend explained me that it happened. It's better to move it. So the situation was like it doesn't matter which tack was it. You got this is this, uh, the finish line. The guy came here, came back, and then he finished. Is it allowed or not? No, no, no. no, you leave a string behind you. When you pull that string tight, where so you went outside of the finish line. Yeah, it, it would not go through the line. So you pass it, yeah. the finish mark, no, came no, back, no, no. and then no, no. passed it the, the finish line. I think not. What do you think? Uh, there is a case where um, the boat for some reason, I imagine it must be something to do with the current, something like that. Or like. In fact, if he went round, but went round both, and then cross. Mm -hmm. No. Yes, in the case yes. says yes, um, because um, he finished from the direction of the last mark, and if you put it tight, the string will actually come from the last mark. But it, it's gone right the way around it. It's a peculiar thing. I can't imagine anyone doing it. But somewhere in the world it must have happened. It's just taking a good if you pull the string, it goes around the two. They say that doesn't make any difference. It's, it's one of those ones you can put down as, I don't need to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you're ever going to do it. <laughs> um, this one here, um, I'm a bit concerned about because if you pull the string tight, it, it doesn't actually. Exactly. But saying with both, it's got to go back around yeah. the left hand mark. Yeah. And, and that's something I noticed at the gate marks. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 There were people down here trying to get back around again. And I think one did that, and then that, and round. Uh, but I don't think that works. But could it be that nulling the other uh, boy? It's nice. He didn't go around that boy and what went just around the other boy. Um, well, what the one is discarded. Yes. So uh, I think it's still valid. You, you think that's valid? Going around both? Of course. So, yeah. Yes. Well, he didn't sail between the marks. Which he does need to do. That string would have to come down between the marks. So okay. when he put it tight, he doesn't do that. Uh, and if, what he should have done from here is not sail that way, but come back. So he came down, he ended up outside, and he should have come back that way. And I'd have done that, or so I'd have done that. And then, when you put it tight, the string is actually between the two marks. <coughs> yes? And I have a gate question. So, the reason the phrase, we're both coming down to brown, and the uh, preferred way this way. So the, the boat goes up here, I'm coming down here. And uh, at this point uh, on uh, on uh, port. port. So he's on some and he decides suddenly to go this way. Okay. And so we collide. Okay. So you're now both on the same. Because I was, I was in the process of diving over uh, what is called it to go that way, okay. but I don't know if I have finished the jive yet. So I, I, I don't know what was right. Okay. Well, um, you're, you're on opposite jives there. So port and starboard it is obviously, um, you know, uh, a matter. If you're on starboard, he, he has to avoid you. Um, if, if you like that, you haven't jived, okay? Then um, you are the wind with both nice kick clear. If you are jiving, you are altering course, and he was keeping clear, possibly, but when you jived, okay, he hadn't got time to respond. So therefore, that 16 one could come in. When, like changing your course, 
<coughs> you've changed your course and he hasn't got the opportunity to keep you clear of it. But can the same thing be applied for the blue boat? If he well, tags yeah. directly at the well, mark, yeah, he has the red boat time the room to avoid. I want that word, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> because it depends on when did he tag and how long has he been on that tag. He, he tagged immediately after. Okay, then that could be a problem for you. Yeah. And then, it was. <laughs> and that's why you end up coming to see us. Because we listen to your stories and decide what is the most likely thing to happen. Um, which is quite interesting because it's not beyond all reasonable doubt or anything like that. It's what is the most likely thing to happen. Which is why when you've got um, a protest committee that know or sell the class, they're more likely to come up with probably the right scenario. But we don't always get it right because it depends on what you tell us. Could you mention the same situation but on the other mark? When you have a group of boats coming downwind and the blue boat tacks around directly around the mark. Yes. And you have a group of boats coming down. I mean, it creates a bloody mess. How much room does the blue boat have to give that crowd of boats to avoid them? Well, I've got to say, if he's tacking back in, why? <laughs> Why are you going into a great big forest of boats? You know, is that going to be fast? No way. If it does happen, um, it comes back to, well, now he's on port, he's tacked. Have these guys got the opportunity to keep it clear? Because if they haven't, yeah, he can't do it. But it might be a land there. He might want to get out yeah. off the land. Yeah, let's say so in, my, in my case, we had land here. Yeah, yeah, so he wants to go there, get out. But you can have land here as well, so he might want to get out. Well, he, he might do. Um, but there's always something that you never consider. Nobody ever considers stopping. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> there's nothing in the room that says you've got to go at maximum speed like this. So you, you can slow down and wait for it to clear. <coughs> to tack back into it is going to be a nightmare for you and for them as well. well and you, you might get, you know, caught out on. But you have to predict that. If there is a problem, there's a land. Then you take the, the other gate. Yeah. So, well, yes, you can That's do it. just that. The if other you crowd is it's running behind you then? The, the other alternative is to go and get out of freight. <laughs> so what kind of course do you think you laid there? <laughs> <laughs> but yesterday we had a situation like this and you, from the mark, you, if you tack directly you could basically reach all the way up the finish line. So a lot of boats tried to tack as early as possible. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So I mean, when you have that carrot hanging in front of your nose, tacking before the other boats and getting an advantage, that's when you can get that situation. You can get it, but yep. then if you've got your brain working, you think, well, if I get caught up in that, I'm going to lose a lot more places. <coughs> so, you know, there's a matter of safety. If you understand it a bit, then you'll be able to possibly foot off a bit. I just want uh, you to stress the, the um, responsibility of the blue book, even though it tags to, to starboard. Mm. Yeah. Now, I, I've had it in the fleet where a whole load of us have gone around, and we're now all on port. Yeah. Some guy who's made a, a shocking landing comes back at you and starving like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a nightmare. Yes. Because um, he'd actually been sailing for some time now. Never even saw him. Mm -hmm. Just didn't expect it. Um, but, you know, the problem uh, was ours. It was probably, we probably just cleared them off. That's more like that. Can I go back to the finishing line? I wrote yeah, come the, on, the, come the on. question was answered fully from someone. But do you need to have the whole boat on the uh, let's say on the finished side of the line or is it enough to no. have the, the to finish? Yes. The band. Yes. Yeah. Um, the race officer should take probably this side of the the mark. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And there is that sends that bash, crosses that. Okay. If you've got a bow split, that doesn't count anymore. <laughs> it's the stem of the bow, but um, I, I don't think uh, radio saving. Uh, maybe the cats may have a bow split? I, I don't know. Um, but we're not racing cats, that doesn't matter. Um, but 
the other thing is, if you've got current, you finish, it come down on the mark. Okay? You've not cleared the mark. So you need to be make sure you keep well off that mark. Otherwise you don't have a reasonable so Did you say that you have to have the whole boat across the line? No, no, no. Just about good. Okay. As soon as the bow crosses the line, okay, you can do that if you want. You don't have to cross the line. You can sail straight down. That's not very popular if other boats are finishing. So if your bow crosses the line, but you drift and hit the boy, you are being alive. Yes, of course. So it's important you don't hit the boy after you finish. Always a good thing. Despite the argument we're having with Sweden and other places about touching bubbles. Okay? Do you really care about the best Sorry, I missed that. There's a contact. When you go in, there's a contact. With what? With another boat. Yes. There's a well, after the start, after the finish. After you, you, you the boat goes in. I don't have a catch. If the boat goes in, and oh, there's someone yeah. coming on board, what will happen? Come show. While you do that, this the sweet, we don't uh, talk about exactly. touching don't the know. start and finishing line. That's not allowed. Oh, if, if this happens. <laughs> okay. The Mado. The Mado. The Mado. The other way around. What? Sorry, I'm not allowed. Port is not allowed. Port is not allowed. Well, is the blue boat keeping clear? Yeah. No. No. It's required to keep clear. It's but not keeping clear. It's finished. Yeah, he's he still, still racing. racing. Yes, he's I still know. racing. So in that case, blue will, have, will not be uh, finished and has to do a 360 to finish. And stay back into the line. Yeah, 360. That's what he should have. This will go. Or you get practice. And the question to the windward mark. Two boats. And why are you coming out? Another one that. I, I know it happens at my home club, is um, where you've got this situation coming into the mark. There's no open there. Um, but this, and the, the wind's all like that, so you're coming in like that. So there's no open there. Can this guy tack? No. no. As long as it doesn't no, interfere with the other guy. He'd be tacking in the guy's water if he did. Yeah. It's a problem. So the only thing he can actually do is yeah. enough. Yeah. All right? And then this guy has to dip him. Mm. Don't tack. Because if you go beyond head to wind, you're the kick clear boat. But in that situation, you love to get your bow across the line. Um, Close to mark, and this guy behind you has to do it. He can't squeeze in there and try and get it. What's important to remember is that a reversing boat has no right of way. So if you slow the boat and you're reversing and hit the other boat who's knocking you, then you're in the wrong again. I think the answer is yes, not altogether. What I'm saying is don't tank yes. in that situation. Well, so if, if, if he gets stuck in iron because he pits, Oh. And, and you're stalled, the wave is pushing you back, you're reversing. A reversing boat has like no right of way. But he's finished. Yeah, but if he hits the other blue boat, which is trying to avoid him, then he's in the wrong again. Well, the, the blue boat ducks. Okay, if he got into irons... Yes, go, go, go. I think the best out would be... So basically, they're coming like this, he went up, uh, this guy ducked him, he's stuck in irons, he, he's moving back and hits him. Oh, well, that would be a problem. <laughs> well, you know, hopefully we, we have, have no momentum on that. Hopefully we've got enough boat speed to be able to get close to the mark. It probably won't be an issue. It would be an issue if you're down here, where you know he's got a long way to go to get there. But if he's actually close to the mark, but if that shouldn't be an issue. If he, if he is close to the mark, uh, there is still there is still uh, uh, room room uh, at the point, no? Has well, no, because it, it did, because it was stern. It still has to be clear on the rule 18. Yeah, but it, it was 12, it's a stern. It's no, no overlap. <coughs> if there's an overlap, it's different. This one has to be a rule. But we're saying no overlap. 
and the guy, what he's hoping to do is to try and squeeze in and get, you know, their performing or maybe other night submission. Sorry, you were going to have a say. Our question to the whiteboard mark, two rows remain here. Very close, very close. And on four. On four, yeah, this, like this. And he takes the round and mark, and he hits, he has the right to the round and mark, or is he, uh, he go on and, and here, because he lost his, his rights in, in, the, in the shifting. Okay, so since you go past head to win, 18 turns on. Rule 18, so, okay, if they were, if they were open act, okay. No, no, no. Okay, but if they were, as soon as he goes past head to win, or outside the zone, 18 turns on. Here, I think it's just what we were saying before, following in, bluff, don't tack, because as soon as you tack, you're the keep clear boat. He's past head to win, he is now keep clear. And he has to, to go here and... Well, so what I'm doing is exactly the same as we said before. I'm not head to win. He now zips you, then you tack. Wait for him to zip you. As soon as he goes past your transom, it is not an issue to him anymore. How are we doing? Any more? Uh, how about starboard hand marks? We, we don't do them um, in, in championships, starboard hand, because um, they, they will do it in match racing and team racing, because they get quite complex on, on the rules. So to try and have more fun team racing and match racing, they, they go for the harder option. For us, it, it, it's um, quite a bit of a pain. Um, if you're coming into it like this, you're in a position where red can't tack, and a lot of people think, I can tack, and they tack. And I drop the courses over here to another mark. <coughs> so blue could keep red going on, and on, and on. Now blue tacks, having been the keep clear boat, red tacks, now blue is right away, and red is keep clear. Okay? So it, it gets, it starts getting uh, difficult. And exactly the same thing, if red can bluff and force to go underneath, fine, but blue may decide to slow down. <coughs> Reds, and then blue can go around inside. So it starts to get complex because you can't actually tack. And a lot of people think, well, my proper course is over there. Then, sorry, um, you've got to keep clear of the, the blue boat um, if you start to tack. Okay? Talk about the same thing. Same thing on the gate, is it? Like yeah, on the gate. Um, that, that's another one where people sometimes, and it's this particular gate, okay? So you've got a um, wind behind you this time. So you're, you're coming in here on, on port, and you're coming in here on starboard. Well, which is the right away boat? Oh. <laughs> Blue is the right way back because it's on starboard, but it's required to give room because it's overlapped with red. Red's overlapped inside. Okay? So, you're going to get to the mark. There is another rule, 18.4, which says you have to jump. No. So, so that's the no, only time that the starboard boat doesn't have right of way. The starboard boat is right of way, way, but has to give room. Give room. It's room. one of the exceptions. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going around. This applies for the gate. This is all. No, uh, 18.4 doesn't apply for... Oh, no, it doesn't. You're quite right. So 18.4 is not the time. 
That's why we are not required to die. No, if there is a soul bar, then we have to establish the process. Chris, let's do the same thing. Oh, let's go. If you are driving around the market, you're going to have to establish the process. Okay, so we've got two votes coming in. Which turn? Blue is on. Starboard. Red is on. Four. So as they enter the zone, blue is right away vote, but also entitled to room at the mark. In this case, blue is not required to sail to the mark. This is going to change in two years' time with the next rule. But it's, this applies at the moment. Blue is not required to sail to the mark. Can go out here, taking red with him to make a tactical rounding to come round close to the mark. Are we talking 18 4 now? All the. No, he hasn't jumped. Well, 18 4 doesn't require him to jump, but he has got to go around the mark. Now, um, now red can only go around behind. Um, it's like having two stars, because he's on starboard. Starboard, port, okay? He's got two stars, because he's got a star for being the right way boat, and another star for being inside over there. Okay? If it's like that, he's only got the one star. Because he's the keep clear boat being windward. And this one um, is the right away boat. But he has got the inside overlap. And the rule says he must sail to the mark like a corridor. <coughs> he can't go wide and make a tactical round. That's what the rule says. However, in real life, they always make a tactical round. But that's not what the rule says. So that's why the rule will change. Okay. Mm -hmm. but can um, we keep going around the game now? Well, let's just take <coughs> another situation. Mm -hmm. what, what's Red's situation? Mm -hmm. Sorry? But we're both his their own green. Okay, he's over that on green. And would be, as they enter the zone, entitled to room. Green has to give red room. It's keep clear of blue. Blue has to give room to and red. and red because of that situation. So he's got to give room to the two boats to come around inside. Okay? What happens if they're like that? Blue is clear. Green. Green is green. Green is red. Red has a room on green and blue is clear at the ground. Absolutely. Okay. So the difference between that boat being there and there, okay? Because he's there, um, there's no continuum of the amount of room to be given. So green has to give room to red and must keep clear of blue even though it's overlapped on the outside. Okay? It's when it's overlapped on the inside like that that that's the difference. So that one, blue has to give room to two boats. Here, blue doesn't have room to, it doesn't have to give room to anyone. Something else that I noticed um, with the other day Choo choo. No, no, please. What about that? Blue has room on yellow. Blue has room on yellow. 
Well, I used to see inside of them. They're all black. They're all black. They're all black. Okay, so let's go. Can you draw the circle, please, Chris? <laughs> There's also the fact the zone is, is going to be yeah, it's not even in the zone. Yet. And that happened, um, and it, it happened here the other day with the long stream. They're all very well behaved, taking turns to go around. But actually, the guy on the end wasn't even in the zone. So even if it was um, a bit more like this. Um, it, it could be that blue gets to the zone before yellow. Or is that back to the side? Here, here so, it is easy. On the board, but when you are on the water, uh, how can you how can you calculate mm -hmm. the distance? Mm -hmm. well, it's on well you can't get it tape you can't get tape measure out no. um, what actually happens is this one just goes and joins on the back of But in, in fact that that but even is a little bit of a But quite often they don't realise that even boats in New York are entitled to room at the mark. But they can't get there in time to take advantage of it. But when you open your transom up, you really are um, giving guys room. What else? What happens if a board another board is coming on this board? And then the boat turns in the circle, it turns, and the others are coming as well. Mm. And it will become on starboard. No, that's not no point. He's coming in on starboard and then turns out. Because yeah. of the word <coughs> you, just, you do this and you then you turn. No, no, no. Yeah, but where is the wind? That, if, if we are upwind, upwind, sorry. Oh, upwind. Okay. Upwind. It's, it's, it's a board and board. It's a board. board coming and turns, and the four is outside the circle. Or it, it's in the circle. And it manages to turn. But the, the direction of four, for example. Let me do it. Can you can see. You can see. You can see. If it comes just like this, then this turns. Yeah. The next one has four. <laughs> what, what rule would come into force here? Rule it in. It's one that happens a lot with radio yeah, sailing and makes it very difficult. For you. But you've got the stream coming in on starboard and you've got the port tack guy coming in here. <coughs> you know the rule? It's part of 18. 18 3. Mm. Okay? Tacking inside the zone. So if you're tacking inside the zone and you cause one of these boats to sail above close hauled to the this ship, then you have broken this rule 18.3. It's there to try and stop people coming in on port at, at the, uh, the mark. Um, for radio sailing, it can cause an enormous fire. And what we try and do is at least know the number of the guy that's coming in on port. And if anything happens, he carries the can. And we keep him turning forever and ever until <laughs> all these boats have gone through. Sorry, uh, on this one, we had in three worlds uh, a situation when six boats were uh, stopped totally and some of them damaged due to this mm. action. Mm. Um, so the boat at the boat at fault received the penalty. Uh, but 
I don't uh, find it appropriate that none of the votes that were had lost the whole race got any type of compensation. It's a question of um, you know, grievance, and it, it's very difficult, um, particularly when you're setting up quite a long debate over uh, redress that we'll give the, the other day after the entanglement. Um, because basically, there's another rule that isn't in the rule book called hard cheese, or unlucky, that you get involved in a situation where you can lose out. There's no recompense. You have to look at the rule book, and there are, for regular setting, I think, five um, things. It's got to be through no fault of your own to get redress, and you've got to lose uh, significant you know, places. Well, to me, significant is a very strange word because. <laughs> I think it's the church service, actually. We've never got a better term. But I would say down here, they are, are very often in radio, same thing in general, and especially down here. You know, we see at every top mark, we see this situation. We see numbers of collision of poor tag boats coming in, but we rarely see a single 360. Yeah. I don't think anyone here takes out his correction weights from the boat because it would be such a bad case of cheating. And it gives you maybe one to two meters advantage to take it out. To hit in there and try to bang into an advantage is way worse because now we're talking about 10, 20 meters of advantage and disadvantage. And no one sees that as the really severe cheating it is. And it's, it's a nightmare to stand there and watch five, I mean, six boats banging in for port. No I, one taking I, I wouldn't the word, use the word cheating. Um, you know, taking weights out of your boat, yes, to find that will come under something we'll deal with under Rule 69. No, no one would dream of doing that. Yeah. But, but that seems to be okay. I, I would say it could well be Rule 2, because you're deliberately breaking a rule. And the penalty for that is uh, a DNE. Yeah. So it's a disqualification you can't discard. Um, I would put it more down to the fact they're chancing. They're chancing their luck. But when they do cause a, a, a pile-up like that, um, I, I think you know, rule two is quite an appropriate thing. Chancing, I mean, we all do that now and then. And we, we misjudge rule of faith. And fact. Sure. But the penalty. Uh, I'd have to be sure that it's done deliberately. Because the rule two is to deliberately break a rule. You can so you're going in there knowing that you're going to be in your own place. One DNA, um, two DSQ. There have been one or two suggestions to get around it. Yeah, I'm afraid you might know more about this than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is putting another mark here. Yeah. <coughs> Damn wind of the windward mark. Which means that if you tangle this, you still can't make the mark. So you continue across here and then tank. So you join the start of train out here and it stops those people trying to squeeze in at the end. Now that's been tried successfully, I understand, in several places, but I've never been to an event to see it. Some of you may have been. I think 18.3 and this coming in on Paul is a real problem mm -hmm. in radio mm -hmm. um, If you're on, on the port lay line, on you know, and you're standing watching your boat sailing on port into the mark, that means we're racing from right to left. Then the difficult bit is to judge mm -hmm. where the mark is and how soon to tank. Those that um, go out, and I've talked to quite a few of the you know, really good band top and people like that, and what they will do is they'll go wide early out on starboard and tack above it and then go around the outside 
of any perceived trouble. And they, they say, you know, it pays most of the time you know, to actually do that. But going out on the port labour and trying to judge when to tack, and you've got starboard boats coming in, it's virtually impossible. Very difficult to do. And so, you know, any idea that you can try and have, you actually try and remove this 18 3 coming in. Can I talk about the gift situation? Yeah, sure. Okay. Chris, just on this situation, we had in, in the past another solution for it. That's to double the penalty. Oh. <laughs> okay. And we, we did that in Limani with the Amnesty. Yeah. And if you were found guilty, coming from port and creating some mess, then if you take your, it was umpired, so if you take your penalty, it's a two-turn penalty. If you don't, and you are penalized by the, uh, an umpire, <coughs> that makes two times two. That's four, four, four turns. turns. <laughs> we only have to do it once. And people learn the lesson. Yeah. <coughs> the main problem is that the normal number of times is zero. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. For saying not doing I, I, they're not doing I'm it. I'm telling you, it was an umpire. But surely, yes. um, you know, as a fleet, you, you end up knowing the people that keep doing this. And, and don't be sort of um, refuse to buy them a beer or something, or ostracize them, <laughs> make them sit at meal times on their own. Um, you know, if you continue to behave like that, you know, the fleet's going to be pretty fed up with you. And so, you know, social pressure quite often helps. Can I follow up? Um, so my problem is not that uh, what penalty this person was for breaking the rules. My problem is that there are five sailors who get DNF without any compensation. So I would have thought that you could give this person these five could get, let's say, the average of what they otherwise would have or something like that. Um, I don't think I'm wrong, but if you don't finish the cost of an incident, you can't finish the race. You've been disabled. You get reasons. The problem is when you're not, you're not um, disabled. And you're able to finish. That's that, what that I understand. But in this case, I think there are a number of boats who are not able to finish, and they did not get. It. Well, they should get rid of some of them. And there was a hearing about it, and nothing was done. Yeah. Well, I can't speak for that. But it depends if. If another boat was found to be at fault or something, and they were unable to finish, I think they should get reduced. Maybe there was some other twist with that. We don't know. Sorry, off you go. I move them. But now we're coming. We want to go around this gate. Yeah. And uh, the, when we when we enter the zone, the, we are clear as dirt, so we don't have any rights on him. Yeah. So he goes here. Maybe he is the first boat, he is hard to see the mark, so he, maybe he goes a little bit too far. We have the wind and take a little bit of wind from him, so we accelerate and get closer. So, And I cannot go in there, so I have to go out here, yeah. and he also has to go out here. And then maybe he continues a little bit, I have to follow, I cannot squeeze in because I'm, now I'm, I, there's no room. Then he, he goes up around the mark, I, I uh, well, I end up, let, let's say, I cannot go in here, so no, no, no. I have to go here. Yeah. There I be sad. This, this guy, is, uh, he was coming here, and he see a possibility now that maybe he can squeeze in here. <laughs> so he comes here, I come here behind, because I have to go around the mark. Maybe he's now here, and then he goes here. Yeah, and then he goes further. He just uh, <laughs> and he goes on the, now he will be on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's on the yeah. top wheel. And you? And I'm here. And you risk a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> you have to lead a blue boat. <laughs> now, Red has got no right to go in there. So he's yeah. chancing it. Yeah. But as long as he keeps clear of him and doesn't hit the mark, yeah. he's all right. Mm -hmm. And if we, let's say... Well, and if there's contact, he's got problems. If uh, let's say not close hold and I cannot. Uh, oh, then, then if he's stopping you, setting a proper course, it is, he's got a problem. Mm -hmm. Great, yes. 
Don't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must wait. It yeah, happens quite a lot when we come from behind or faster. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, Chris, could you also mention when does uh, the green boat's right away cease? Oh, when? when does his right away? Bay 18. Stop. Yeah. When does it stop? Um, when does it stop? When, when basically when you clear the mark. It's not very good. The next version the of Rule 18 will make it a lot clearer. And it will say it's when your trance is clear of the mark. Yeah. But that isn't the case at the moment. But it will be in two years' time. So it is, it's basically when you pass the mark. That's what it is. It's not clearly defined. Unless you can find something different. Didier, you got something different? No, I just want to, to read the paragraph okay. of it. It's in the, just after rule 18.1, you have several things. Then rule 18 no longer applies between both when the mark rule has been given. So it's after you've given the mark. Um, it, it doesn't actually tell you when it turns off. So, um, sorry, to, sorry to say you, but it depends. Uh, the, the, um, the, the, the best judge we have in Sweden, his definition is when you are able to steer the course to the next mark. Okay. That's when you are no longer rounding. Yeah, that, that, that would work. Um, but if you're not moving very quickly, or you're drifting backwards on a current or something. Um, the next definition, and it's the same as windsurfers have already got this definition, it's when their transom has cleared the mark. It's a good one. Eighteen's off. And I think that's what will happen with the rewrite they're doing at the moment on, on Rule 18. Um, I think if you go on some of the web pages, um, you, you'll find that there are various consultation bits that have gone out. Because they want to make sure that whatever they do to the next set of rules is what the sailors want. It's got to be driven by the sailors, not by people sitting in offices. So, um, you know, have a good look. And, you know, if you see something that you don't like, or you do like, you know, contribute. And they want people to tell them, you know, what, what's good. Um, what, one of the situations we had um, the, the other day um, was running down towards the mark and a question of. <coughs> Um, when was the overlap established? Because we got the mark, um, yeah, forget these lines, we got, we got the mark here. And so one boat enters the line, uh, the zone, the lead boat, and it's a question was that an overlap or not an overlap? And obviously one boat says there was no overlap, and the other one saying there was an overlap. So you've got this disagreement. And for us, that, that is a bit of a problem. But there is a bailout in uh, Rule 18. 18.5? It's the one that says, um, if there's any doubt, it didn't happen. So you could establish that overlap and be entitled to room, but you can't prove it. Mm. You go into the protest room, and unless you've got a witness who happened to be here, looking at that line, who can come and say there was an overlap? You know, that overlap would be found not to have happened. If we go back up the course as far as possible and uh, they say, well, you know, was there an overlap here? No, no, there wasn't an overlap there. Was there an overlap here? No, 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 not quite. Now we've got to the edge and say, was there an overlap? Now they've agreed up here that there was no overlap. So that's something they both agree on, so we can use that as a fact. So the question then was, was an overlap established? And this rule will say, no, it wasn't. Just the same is if we go back saying, well, we went around the whole way down the course, we were overlapped, then the blue boat got a little bit ahead, but there was still an overlap. And then blue boat says, well, I did that to break the overlap as I got into the zone. Then we would find there was still an overlap because we can't prove that he actually did that at the right time to break it. So we go back to that one, they agree there was an overlap. 
And so therefore that overlap continues as far as we can see. And that's how we get around this argument with one of you says there was and the other one says there wasn't. The safest thing to do, if in doubt, sell wine and protest you. Then you only lost one place. Not going to a hearing and get disqualified. Okay? Question? It's half eleven. Um, you've had a pretty good bash. I'm happy to continue. I've still got a voice. Um, I don't know, if Fred. Is Fred? Any idea on racing? I'm sorry. Any idea on racing? Yeah. That's when we're just checking routers and everything. The way it's clean. Um, the whole storm just passed by. Twenty storms away from us right now. The main concern is still the. C stage at this moment. Chris is our boat guy out there. It's a lot of waves still. We have some trash on the area. We, we were expecting the wind shift because at this moment we have no condition to set a race course anywhere here. Um, the call is we're gonna stay in a hotel. We're gonna try to see where we were yesterday afternoon. But uh, once again, we're expecting just a wind sh shift and hoping that for safe conditions for freezing our boat to be able to set a race course. Uh, waves are still splashing over the deck. We're gonna go out the <coughs> during the lunch time. We're gonna actually create a race, I mean, um, control area with tapes around, trying to avoid accidents like yesterday. Uh, but everything's still up in the air, guys. We're we are doing our best. The reason I was checking phone with me and Darren, his sheet, we're exchanging messages here, trying to have the best thing, the best for you. But uh, at these moments, at these moments, guys, 11.30 right now, um, I'm gonna share with all of you. Actually, do you mind to share on the group? The video, the video yeah, the rather video for everybody. At least we are on the same page here. Um, my main concern right now, to be honest with y'all guys, is safe. I gonna see our boat driver here in a bad situation. We have a really good size dinghy, and by the way, it's bigger than that. Um, and also by the waves going over the. That situation, the islands for me is also being you known. This sea stage right now is pretty rough. I can't compare as a laundry machine. And that's another reason that I'm thinking the wind is gonna be increasing, which is better because you may be able to control your boat. The way the reason we freaking out yesterday was pretty hard on you guys to control your rigs. You can stay in position, boats touching, crashing, all those kind of things. The good news so far is we can see the race course. There is no sun there yet. But uh, if you see the trees are moving, we're expecting to start racing pretty soon, but uh, not, not before, I'll say, 1 o'clock afternoon. So that means let's get, give everybody time to put to have a nice lunch. Chris, if you don't mind, let's go there and check because once again, you, you are really important. Launching air is also going to be really tough, guys, because even the corner that we launched yesterday is still pretty rough. So I know a lot of people have different, uh, I'll say different interpretations about weather. I'm more concerned about safe. If you guys want to come with us and have, have a nice view and make a nice call, it is important for you guys to share your opinion with me. But at this moment, we have no race course out there. We expect a wind shift, so that means it's gonna be coming this direction. We can set a starting and finish line in the same position. We're going to make it simple at this time. Because for me now, it's more like safety than anything else. Uh, even just grab some uh, pipes where we're going to set 
and like I said, the control area, let's try to keep inside the control area, let's try to respect that. Once again, we all big guys here, we all adults. I'm not asking you, I mean, I'm not begging you to stay there, it's on you, but if you go outside the racing area, the control area is danger. It's a lot of slippery. The water is actually coming all the way to that wall when you actually put your boats. So it's still a lot of you know waves there. So we expect in the next hour or so, you know, the way the waves comes down a little bit. Also another thing I notice is unfortunately we have some trash on the race course, a lot of plastic, a lot of containers, and that may be another problem because once again I have only one boat and for some reason you guys get stuck and you cannot maneuver your boat as fast. I would I may put freeze in a bad situation trying to save the boats. Like I said guys, it is an unfortunately we can control Mother Nature but we are trying our best to make sure we can have a good event still. Yes sir. Are you considering to move to the other place where we have been before? Good question. We are checking still the radar and, and the wind direction. Guys, unfortunately, the wind is going to be close to where we stopped sailing yesterday. It's kind of like that, and we are here. Going back in the same situation, I believe it's not going to be a good call. However, it's safe there. If you guys want to do a reaching race, follow the little race, we may set a course for you there. But once again, we are trying to do our best. That that place I was hoping because once again if you're here maybe here maybe but no it's out actually is pushing to this direction which northwest northwest yeah and unfortunately for this island northwest is not a good wind direction for the whole island so keep your feet crossed let's try to work together. I'm gonna walk down right now. I was expecting Chris to come with me. If you all wanna come, the only thing I would like to ask you, please be careful because a lot of slippery areas. Water is still coming over the deck, so just be careful. If you don't feel comfortable to be on a corner, just don't walk there, because it's not necessary. <coughs> Any questions, do everybody understand what I said? Yes. I didn't understand. What about the lunch? Where, where do we pick it up or do we eat the restaurant or what is the idea? That's a good question. Lunch is going to be provided as we We provided we yesterday by the lobby at 12.30. Um, this better if we uh, send the message in the group. So those who are not here can come and have them as well. Okay, so lunch will be served around 12.30 at the lobby. So we will share that information as well on our WhatsApp group. <coughs> Guys, if for some reason we don't have race conditions today, Melissa <coughs> and they actually gave a good, a good. Uh, he he actually suggests us a couple of good games. One of them will be. Uh, can you come here, please, Maurice? I'm gonna please, Maurice. <laughs> So we have two pool tables. <laughs> we can set a world championship pool table. <laughs> or Darren is going to be leading us for a synchronized swing <laughs> on the pool. However, guys, we all must be topless. <laughs> Jokes apart, guys, like I said, we're doing our best. 12.30 lunch will be served at uh, lobby. And we are planning to rate wind direction. What's the best call for us to check there? So nothing's gonna happen to one o'clock afternoon, guys. So keep keep your eyes open on the WhatsApp group. We're gonna let you know. So if anything happens. It's going to be after 1 o'clock, and I will give you guys enough time to come down, prepare your book. Today is not going to be like a first day. I'm going to push. I'm going to give you guys time and opportunity to prepare your boat to walk slow, and maybe have a team 
the idea was have a team, let's say A fleet is going to be racing. If C is not doing anything, I would like to suggest C fleet guys support a fleet like I will launch your boat. So C fleet go take one boat, slowly relaunch. So that means the A fleet guys doesn't need to run and not walk fast. So you guys can actually sail from where you're gonna be. And, and we rotate like that. So B will help C, C will be helping B, and therefore. If you all agree, I believe is that one of the safest ma maneuvers we can do it. Once again, it's everything we're trying our best. However, the guy who's gonna make a call is Chris because I'm still worried about his safety on the boat. If you guys walk there, you guys gonna also see a lot of waves, a lot of, they, 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 we think we're gonna have good winds, but I'm more about this stage. I know that I am boats they can handle that, but I'm concerned more about our personnel in the water. Any questions? Thank you all. So one o'clock will be you guys gonna have some news, but share with your group, talk to everyone, great.